welcome back students in our this session and this is your assignment number 10 and in this session i am going to teach you about the third type of animal tissue that is muscular tissue so here we start now as i told you that there are four types of animal tissues one is epithelial second is connective third is muscular and fourth one is nervous tissue so today i am going to teach you about the third type of animal tissue that is muscular tissue or contractile tissue muscular tissue it is contractile tissue which possesses contractile proteins inside cells held together by connective tissue so this muscular tissue is a contractile tissue and it inside the cells the there are contractile proteins also now it consists of long cylindrical cells called muscle cells or muscles fiber this muscular tissue is consist of long and cylindrical cells and they are called muscle cells or muscles fibers it occupies nearly 40 percent of the total weight of the body it is found in every part of the body where movement is involved so this muscular tissue is uh, present almost in our body in every part and because of this tissue only the movement is possible it forms the muscles of the body it can contract and relax and that is why it is also known as contractile tissue now we see the functions of muscular tissue muscles tissue is a contractile tissue as i told you that it can contract as well as relax also so it is known as contractile tissue second point it causes the movement of the body and its various parts such as arms and legs by contraction and relaxation so this tissue is present in our arms as well as in legs and it is uh, responsible for the contraction and relaxation movements now we see the classification muscle cells can be divided into three types based on their structure function and location now these are of three types first one is straighted muscles second is smooth muscles and the third one is cardiac muscle now first we see what is straighted muscles straighted muscles or we can say voluntary or skeletal muscle these muscles join the bones to each other and are therefore called skeletal muscles as these muscles they join the bones with each other so they are known as skeletal muscles they are long cylindrical and non-tapering the muscles fibers do not branch and run parallel to one another longitudinally each fiber is multinucleated that means it contains many nucleus and possesses alternate dark and light bends giving them straighted appearance therefore these are also called straighted muscles now i'll show you the diagram of straighted muscles children see this is the diagram of straighted muscles or skeletal muscle in this you can easily see the muscles fiber and there are so many nucleus that is why it is multinucleated and they are present in the longitudinal form right so this is the straighted muscles and this is straight that is why it is known as straighted muscles the fibrous bends are straight so they are known as straighted muscles now we see the location of this straighted muscles these muscles are present in body parts which we can move at our conscious will these parts include limbs face neck tongue and diaphragm so this uh, straighted muscles is present in our body part by which we can move according to our conscious and according to our will and the examples are limbs face neck tongue and diaphragm now we see the function of this straighted muscle or skeletal muscle first is skeletal muscles have a large number of contractile proteins 
enabling them to contract and expand rapidly because of this it can able to expand as well as contract second point they are attached to the bones and help in the movement of all parts of the body so they are attached with the bones and that is why all the body parts movement is responsible that is why it is responsible for the movement of the different body parts now we see the second one that is a smooth muscles or we can say involuntary or unstrated muscles now they are spindle shaped unbranched muscle cells which are called smooth muscles fibers because they do not contain striations these fibers are uninucleated with a single centrally located nucleus in this only one nucleus is present and which is centrally located and they are spindle shape and unbranched muscle cells now you see the diagram of this smooth muscles sure and this is the diagram of the smooth muscles in this you can see the nucleus and the muscles fiber and they are not in a straight line so that is why it is known as unstrated or involuntary muscles now we see the location of uh, smooth muscles the smooth muscles are found in visceral organs for example walls of stomach esophagus intestine urinary bladder blood vessels iris of eye and bronchi etc now this smooth muscles we can find in these parts of the body now we see the functions first smooth muscles are involuntary muscles as they cannot contract or expand at our will they cannot expand or uh, they cannot they cannot uh, contract according to our will so that is why they are known as involuntary muscles second point smooth muscles present in the wall of gastrointestinal tract help in peristaltic movement these movements and the progressive movements which push the food downward in a wave like manner so this muscles is present in the wall of the gastrointestinal tract and because of this the movement of uh, the movement is possible and they can easily the organs can easily push the food downwards in a wave like manner now we see the third muscles that is cardiac muscles or specialized muscles they are involuntary stated and non fatigued muscle fibers which occur in the wall of the heart performing rhythmic contraction and relaxation continuously they are composed of cylindrical non tapering fibers but shorter than skeletal muscles fibers so the cardiac muscles is present inside the heart and it is responsible for the contraction and relaxation of the heart now we see the location of cardiac muscles these muscles are found exclusively in the heart as i told you that the cardiac muscles is present inside the heart and the contraction and relaxation of the heart depends on this muscles only now we see the function of cardiac muscles first cardiac muscles are involuntary muscles like smooth muscles and undergo rhythmic contraction and relaxation second point they contract relax and work continuously without any rest so they can work without taking any rest third point contraction and relaxation of cardiac muscles cause pumping activity of the heart because of this cardiac muscles the pumping of heart may occur and this contraction and relaxation is responsible for the pumping of the heart so only because of this cardiac muscles this pumping activity is possible inside the heart now we see the comparison of three types of muscles that is striated muscles unstriated muscles or smooth muscles or cardiac muscles on the basis of the shape action nucleus location and control now first we see uh, on the basis of shape for striated muscles it is a striped striated long and cylindrical and non tapering and unbranched then for unstriated unstriped 
and straighted spindle shape that is long with pointed ends and for cardiac muscles they are cylindrical and branched now we see on the basis of action first straighted muscles helps in the movement as they are attached to the skeleton for unstraighted or smooth muscles control movement of substances along tubes then cardiac muscles action helps in pumping the blood that is heartbeat now we see on the basis of nucleus in straighted mu muscles the nucleus is multinucleated in unstraighted they are uninucleated and in cardiac again multinucleated now we see on the basis of location straighted muscles attached to the skeleton unstraighted muscles tubular organs gut reproductive system glands and bronchioles then for cardiac it is present in the heart only then now we see on the basis of control for straighted muscles the voluntary that is under individuals will means we can do according to our will according to our conscious we can move this muscles then for unstraighted or smooth muscles it is involuntary not under individuals control then for cardiac muscles it is involuntary and mycogenic that is self generating now with this we have finished with the muscular tissue now you can go through the pdf file and try to solve the questions